know, God has great confidence in himself. <laughs> you know, if, if God say, I can make you wise, you say, Lord, come on, say, Lord, Lord. you can make me wise. It don't no matter what you feel about it. Right? This, why, this, is, this is not that some other person walked up to you, promised you something. This is God, through his wisdom, through Christ, who is saying to you, come, listen to me. I'll share my heart with you, and I'll make you wise. Amen. Even, even fools can become wise. Because foolishness doesn't have to continue. See, foolishness is not the nature of a person. It's their behavior. You know, well, I think, no, this, hold on now, stop. I hear you. No, Pastor, you don't stand the fool I know. No, the fool you know. <laughs> now, here it is. You've been the fool you're thinking about. Come on, we have, we've all, all of us who are saved today were once fools we're not worried about. So don't put anybody beyond what God did for you. If God did it for me, and I was a big-time major five-alarm fool, and I came to Christ, he saved me, and I began to listen to him, and he made me wise. So don't put that past the ability of God to help anybody. It may look like they can't ever come around, but you cannot go by what you see. We walk by faith and not by? Amen. Amen. Now, today I want to talk to you about living in the overflow. Say living in the overflow. Living in the overflow. Now, let's go to our lesson for today. And I'm going to say some more about the, about the devotional. And I'm on my, I got my timer here. I'm starting my timer, y'all. Because the thing about Proverbs is it's a message that never ends. So if I don't put myself on this timer for this series, we're going to be here all day. All right. It started. I got 40 minutes. Now, I stopped it last time because somebody interrupted me. No, my microphone stopped working. I had to stop it. Okay. Look at Proverbs chapter 2. I'm sorry. Let me get to lesson 5. I'm on the wrong day. Day 5. Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 9, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. Amen. New Living Translation. Now, this lesson for today is entitled How to Give to God. You think, oh, yeah, Pastor, you set that up just fine. It's a Sunday morning. You put in the giving lesson on Sunday. I did not. I tell you what, it's amazing. See, the thing about this type of devotional, when you have lessons that are programmed for each day, it seemed like that maybe somebody is contriving to put lessons on certain days. I did not realize this lesson will come on Sunday. I just put them all together, and I was running a little late, so I had to rush. I didn't organize them really that way, so today... Happens to be Sunday, we will give to God, but really this lesson's for every day. Because in the house of wisdom, we learn how to honor the Lord. Say, "Honor honor the Lord. And part of the overflow, a big part of the overflow, living in overflow, is living in a state where you're honoring God at all times. And honor is sort of a misunderstood term. We'll come back to that. Even honoring people appropriately is also important. Now, I want us to consider as well that in this house of wisdom, we have to understand that God is helping those who are reaching to him. Now, listen, through God's mercy, he'll just, he'll come into your life, interrupt you and and speak to you. But the real Great blessing of God comes to those who want to hear from God, who want what he has for them. And I want to share a video with you. We showed it last week. I'm going to show it again because I want you to hear what it sounds like when somebody is motivated to succeed, to to want 
the best, even in the face of opposition. So watch the video of this young man, football player. You saw it last week. If you missed it, you're going to enjoy this because I want you to get a sense of in the house of wisdom, we have an attitude that's somewhat like this. Watch this. I mean, it was going a little back and forth. You guys knew it was going to be a tough dogfight out there, and it was. So what were you guys able to do to come back and win this thing? All right, well, at first we started slow. We started real slow. And, you know, that's all right. That's okay, because sometimes in life you're going to start slow. That's okay. We, we, we told ourselves, hey, we're going to start slow. We're going to keep going fast. We're going to start slow, but we're always, always going to finish fast. No matter what the score was, we're going to finish hard. We're going to finish fast. Yeah, they had us the first half. I'm not going to lie. They had us. We weren't defeated, but they had us. But it took guts. It took an attitude that's all it takes that's all it takes to be successful is an attitude and that's what our coach told us he said he said hey it's gonna be tough it's gonna be hard you're gonna go out there you're gonna battle you're gonna fight you're gonna do it for one you're gonna do it for one another do it for each other you're gonna do it for yourself you're gonna do it for us and you're gonna go out with this win and we believe that we truly did and it's, it's an awesome feeling it's an awesome feeling when you truly believe that you're going to be successful regardless of the situation regardless of the scoreboard you're going to be successful because you put in all the time all the effort all the hard work and you know that it's going to pay off and if it doesn't pay off you continue to give God the glory if you still lose the game you continue to get each other's back and that and that's what we realized regard when or lose we realized that we were gonna be all right it was gonna be okay we're gonna we're gonna keep smiling it was awesome awesome the ball's always got a smile on his face talk about attitude this guy's got attitude awesome. you guys can't tell uh, we met earlier this week and uh, this was the enthusiasm okay. I saw Yes, ma'am. Hey, Amen. you can That's do good. anything That's you put it. your mind to. Never give up we'll on give your God dreams. Some praise Keep for smiling. Apollos no matter what you're going to, if you fall down, just get up. If you can't get up, now, your friends are there to help somehow you. Somehow you know that boy will wind up God's in the there. right place. Hey, I'm there to help you up. You're in there. Life. It's going to be all right. Talking like that. Man. Off the cuff. A, a long out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. And so I want to show you that just as an example of, of what an attitude of expectation can do. And not that we, as he said, and life shows us that everything doesn't turn out the way we hope always. Sometimes we face difficulty and obstacles, you know, but we know God. Amen. So I want you to, in your heart, have that attitude of excitement and expectation and honor God with that same enthusiasm. Hmm? Because there's nothing too hard for God. Let me go back and review. So on day one, the topic was no excuses. Day two, the topic was the high cost of complacency. Proverbs 1, 20, 132 says, For simpletons turn away from me to death. Fools are destroyed by their own complacency. But all who listen to me will live in peace, untroubled by fear or harm. Amen. Amen. So that a lot of what goes wrong in life, you know, devil's out there. He's busy. But I'll tell you something. Our own complacency hurts us more than the devil. What we do not do when we know what to do, what we fail to act on by faith and grace in God, is often the reason why we end up in difficult places. So the advice and the wisdom, wisdom in the house of wisdom says, again, all who listen to me will live in peace. Not some, all. Untroubled by fear of harm. On day three, the topic was you'll get what you chase. And in fact, this is the verse I'm basing what you just heard, a young man speaking that sense of motivation, Proverbs 2, verse 2 says, tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then, then after you seek, as you would seek for things you want in life, then you will understand what it takes or what it means to fear the Lord and you will gain the knowledge of God. So then, 
coming and listening, coming in the house. Chapters 8 and 9 of Proverbs describe life in the house. You know, chapter 9 talk about, she says, and wisdom is personified. So God gave wisdom personality, a woman who invites you to come and has made a table for you. The house is prepared. Our columns have been hewn. I mean, the whole place is structured and it's good to go for you. All we have to do is do what? Come, listen. Amen? On yesterday, day four, <coughs> pardon me, our topic was why options and choices seem to be difficult. Proverbs 2 and verse 10 says, For wisdom will enter your heart, and knowledge will fill you with joy. Watch this. Wise choices will watch over you, and understanding will keep you safe. Wise choices will watch over you. You know, when you choose God, you, we have an option, and you choose God's way, that choice, that watches you. That choice helps you. That, that decision to believe the word of God, that word is activated for you when you believe it. See, people sometimes struggle with options and choices, and we, the whole lesson covered that. Let me give you the synopsis here. It's important to go back over this because, you know, people say, well, I got so many options. Now, options and choices are different. Now, options, to me, speak of external things, things that are outside, one, two, three, option one, option two. But choices are internal. See, you make the choice from the options. So I'm not using the same word, the same term twice. I mean it differently. Options and choices aren't the same. Or one is extrinsic, one is intrinsic, if you will. But listen to this. Now, I believe that wisdom is holy. What do you think? Amen. Why is it holy? It comes from God. Yes. It's God's wisdom. Now, there is worldly wisdom. That's a whole different topic. But God's wisdom is holy. Hmm? Understanding is holy. Now watch this. When you have God's wisdom and God's understanding, you have something holy helping you make your choices among the options. And then listen, if you then are able, and you will be able through the wisdom of God, if you can narrow your options and narrow your choices only to things that are are holy, like your choices should be, it cuts a lot of things out. Because yeah. if your options include stuff that's, that's not even right, stuff that's dumb, people who are off the wall, then they, they come off the list of options. Now you've narrowed the options. You follow me? And sometimes your options are all good. This job or that job. And so then your choice be, is become narrowed because you begin to, to choose based on what fits God's purpose for your life. And when you know God that well, you can then say, okay, these are both good, but that one is for me. Everything that's good for you, everything that's good isn't good for you. So even among the good choices, God helps you to choose. Amen. So choices is seem hard, but when you work within the wisdom of God and operate on God's resources, he helps you see clearly which way you ought to go. Amen. So what your friends say, what your friends recommend is one thing. Like I told you, I got an iPhone 6. Yeah, I got one. Not the big old fat giant 6 Plus. Now, some people got that. That's fine. But some folks only got the big one because everybody says, I'm getting the big one. Why? Oh, it's the big one. Now they got it. And us iPhone folk have had small phones for a long time. So they go out and buy the big phone because, you know, people say, get the big one. I got the, then they get the, they can't, they can't hardly hold it. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's so big, the thing comes way up here, okay? You can't use it one hand. You got to use two hands. You got to scoot up and down. It don't fit in your pocket. So my point is, see, even, even marketing, even people out here advertising, Try to get us to, to make choices outside of God's wisdom. You know, sin buying an iPhone 6 Plus. But I realize that even though I won't have all of the, I can't brag, I got the big one, I don't want the big one. I want the one I can hold on to. And I didn't get gold. I ain't no bling on here. I'm saying, I didn't see, but see, 
We make choices sometimes based just because everybody looks like they're going that way. And you go that way because they're going that way. And I want to remind you that the crowd is usually wrong. <laughs> you know, Jesus said wide and broad is the way that leads away from God. Amen. And then today, again, we're talking now about how to give to God. Because here we find how to live in overflow. And I'm very much interested today in helping us discover that it's God's will for us to be blessed, to prosper. We don't run away from that uh, ever. We understand that we're not talking about, you know, some silliness and goofiness and what some call greasy grace and all that. We're not getting into just extravagance and silliness, but, but to have a full supply and enough over to share. That, that is prosperity, amen? That your needs are met, every bill is paid, and when we say, and I'm going to say today, by the way, you know, uh, receiving an offering, I'm going to tell you, I'll tell you now, we just found out that one furnace has gone out, got to replace one, got to fix the other. It's going to be, you know, some money. And, and, and so what we want to be able to say is, Pastor, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to help pay for that. Because I got it. I got something to give toward replacing a furnace. We have eight of them. It's a big old house, y'all. You know, it's a big house. A lot of stuff going on. But the point is, you want to be able to have something to give Amen. when it's time to give. Amen. And that's why we want to live in overflow. Yes, so there's always enough there to meet a challenge when the challenge arises. You believe this. Amen. So here in our text in Proverbs 3, again it says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce, then you will, then he will fill your barns, your storehouses with grain, and your vats, your containers will overflow with good wine. Now, this scripture is used to motivate people to give. Say, so, you know, we read the scripture now, y'all give. Well, it's not just about giving only. It's really more about the quality of our giving. Because no one can give a lot all the time. But yet, God isn't looking at so much how much as much as the quality of it. He said, the text said, honor God with your wealth and with the best part. Say best part. Yes. With the best part of everything you produce. Now, the best part, that's what I want to focus on right now, or the quality. Jesus said in Luke 6, give it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be given to your lap. For with the same measure you use, it's measured back to you. Again, talking about quality, not just the quantity. Now, for example, let's say if somebody was going to give a large amount of money to the church. Well, we're not going to turn that down unless it's some kind of funny money, you know what I'm saying? But listen. But the person could give that and say, you know what, I don't, I don't even like God. I don't even, I don't even like this church. I'm going to give this money anyway. Uh, knock yourself out, all right? But it's not like there's going to be a, a, a blessing re in return because the giving was not with a joyful heart. Even if you're giving a small amount, any amount, and our hearts are not joyful. We're not really honoring God. We're not really saying, I love you, God, and just giving money. Well, you should do that. But, but listen, you can miss out on it being the best part in a good measure, but not doing it with joy, yeah. but not being willing. Amen? Amen? And then the worst thing is for people who don't hardly give anything and give that stingily. Man, don't, don't be in a boat where not only do you not give to God, you don't even give it with the right attitude. Then you, re, then you don't get any blessing out of it, all right? Now, so, well, I'm doing fine. I'm okay. I don't give in time. I'm just fine. Say, say, M. Give me an M. Give me an M. No, say M. M. Give me an M. M. Give me an E. E. Give me an R. R. Give me a C. C. Give me a y. y. What does it spell? That's what you're operating on. We don't obey God. 
Don't, don't get all up on you. Oh, I'm, I'm doing fine without, without, I don't even serve God. Okay, look at me. I'm fine. Oh, don't, don't go there. Just say mercy. Mercy. Boy, I could talk about mercy for the next hour. How much time I got? Oh, can't go there. My point is, we need to honor God and get off this mercy train and just sliding by, getting by, and our conscience, our conscience is always un, unsettled because we know we're not obeying God. And so we want to live in a place where we're, we're joyful, and we're free, and at peace, but most of all, in a place where God is being honored. So then the quality of our giving, of our serving, makes the difference. And so that the best part and the good measure that we're giving to God is based on the fact we know he loves us. He sent his son Jesus to die for us. I mean, what if for God, we'd be nowhere but six feet under. Now, the blessing is this, though. He said, verse 10, is a very simple concept. When we honor God with our best part, verse 10, then he will fill our barns. We don't have barns. We have you know, storehouses. We have banks. We have whatever we have. He will fill our barns with grain. He will, he will send provision. And he says this, and your vats will overflow with good wine. Now, I understand this, these terms here. He's speaking to us in a parable. That God doesn't, I mean, how many of you need more grain? <laughs> how many need more wine? <laughs> what you need is money and opportunity and health. Come on, somebody. Yeah. These are terms he's using to describe the concept. You follow me? Yeah. But he says, the text is telling us that, in essence, that when we obey God and honor him, that there is a special, there is a release of special provision. You tap into resources of God, and he releases to you his best, his good part, his best measure. That, listen, y'all, you're going to get from God in terms of sowing what you're going to invest in this kingdom. You're going to receive what you're giving. Amen. Not so much, now thank God, you don't get, we don't get what we deserve. Come on, somebody. It's not a mathematical equation we're doing here. Not, not at all. It's an equation of honor. It's an equation of honoring God so God can release to us something special, something significant, something you wouldn't have any other way. You know, God can give you ideas. You know, God can open your mind to understand. You can never get that from I, Listen, I read books. I've got three degrees, and I mean, I've, I got some knowledge. But I have learned things from God I never found in a book. Never got in the classroom, as important as all that is. Amen. I have sat just praying and waiting and sometimes agonizing over something that I couldn't understand, couldn't figure out, couldn't resolve but just kept on loving God and worshiping God, honoring God, giving to God, sowing seed of all types. Yeah, amen. And then look up one day and just something hits my mind mm -hmm. and in my heart, I get an answer, an insight comes, a clarity. As if the word says, God says, here is the way, walk in it. Whoa, where did that come from? It came from God. And wisdom will speak to your heart, not so much audibly, but it's like a, a light is turned on on the inside of you. It happens every time you, when I prepare to minister. I'm bringing a message today, this topic. And uh, the, I got the topic last week. And sometime, you know, you think that, well, I get up here and just preach and carry on. Listen, y'all, there's so much to say that God don't want you to say. I'll tell you a quick story. Remember, I told the story before, but I'll tell it again. I was asked to stand in for a great man of God, well, Pastor O. Johnson, years ago. And he was, gonna, he was scheduled to speak at a conference I was involved with. And uh, he was the speaker. He's a great speaker. Uh, a workshop, in case, uh, well, in this instance, workshop he was doing. And he, he couldn't do that workshop. And he told me the night before. Now, we're, you know, we're friends. And he said, I need you to do my workshop. I thought, oh. Now, you know, I don't like confidence, but there's some folk you don't want to follow. You know what I'm saying? There's some people you don't want to go say, 
T.D. Jake said, hey, fill in for me. <laughs> they didn't come to hear you. <laughs> they came to hear T.D. So he, Dr. Johnson, same thing. Now I got my own flavor and style, but they, they came to hear Earl. Here I'm standing up there. I'm here for Earl Johnson. Folks are like, oh, no. So, so I, now, I, I'm imagining this. Folks don't react like that. I imagine all of this is in my mind. And I'm not in the House of Wisdom yet. I'm just outside the House of Wisdom fumbling around, fooling around. Now watch this. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go find my best sermon. See? I got my notes out, and I found what I thought was my best sermon, the one that people liked the most, the most, the most well-received when I preached it last. And I got that message, and I had it all settled. I'm going to preach this message on tomorrow morning. Because I know, you know, it was, it was anointed, you know. And so I was sitting there, began to really pray seriously, yeah. then got to the house of wisdom on it, see. Okay. And then God asked me, oh, why do you think that message was good? Why was it anointed when you preached it? I said, oh, I knew. Oh. Because you anointed it. Because <laughs> it was the message for them at that time. Amen. See, no message in of it, no sermon is good on, by itself. Amen. Nothing you do or say is good all by itself. It's only good because God blesses it. Amen. Then I knew. I couldn't, I can't bring that tomorrow. That's not the message. It's not the message. I don't care. So my perception of good, I had left God out of my equation. And this is the problem. See, we understand when you don't honor God, you deceive yourself about how you've made it. You, when we don't honor God, we somehow think we had a lot to do with where we are. When we don't honor God, we somehow we become clouded and foolish in thinking that I did this all by myself and you didn't do it by yourself, even when we don't even realize that God is with us, he's with us. Do you think that all the driving you've done, listen to me now, and through all intersections you have driven through safely, that no one ran the light to hit you, that was all because of you? Don't you know angels have held cars back that were going to run the light at the intersection where you were passing through? Do you think you getting through life all by yourself? Oh, no. Mercy. And the more in the house of wisdom we live, the more help we have. And when trouble comes and trouble shows up, then you know, then you know, you just have, you, you, it, it confirms. Now I see trouble. I didn't see the other stuff. Hmm? He kept that from, I didn't see, he, he kept me from seeing this other stuff. And you saw all, listen y'all, I heard this, President Obama, he was the first candidate to get secret, secret service protection. He began to be threatened from the day he announced, okay? And there has been no president who's under more threat than this man, but he don't talk about it. Now, nobody, listen, understands except God what you haven't been through. Because he's with you. You don't want to know. Say, I don't want to know. All the stuff that almost happened to me. Say, I don't want to know. All the stuff that almost happened. So the stuff you see happen, that God helps you out of just a little taste of how good he's been in this crazy old world. Well, Raise your hand. Give God some praise. Raise your hands and praise him. We, we thank you, Lord. Come on, worship him. Don't clap. Worship. We worship you, Lord. We, we want to thank you, Lord, for protecting us, helping us, even in our ignorance and disobedience. Your mercy has endured. And we thank you, Lord. We're not going to just count and bank on that in the sense of not obeying you, but, Lord, we just say thank you for mercy. Mercy in the past, mercy today. Lord, but we want to live in a place where we're exercising wisdom and avoiding problems on purpose, Lord, by letting wisdom instruct us. We thank you, Lord, for it.
in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the overflow isn't hard to get into. It really comes down to honoring God and listening to God. Say, honoring God, honoring God. and listening to God. For example, when you give offerings to God, tithes and offerings, the best part of your offering is not what's left over after all the taxes come out, after all your little debts come out, you know, you got automatic payments working, the bank pulling stuff out, send it on down the street, whatever, you know what I'm saying, all that. After, all, so then what's, so what's left, not your best part. Who can ask the question? People love to ask questions for which they know the answer. People ask questions like, should I give off my gross or my net? You know the answer to that question. Face it. You don't give God off the net. The net means after everybody else, then God. So no, we're giving to God off the top. You follow me? Amen. Say best part. best part. Now, that's how we honor. Say honor. honor. What is honor? The word honor literally means a valuing. It's to value. And it's interesting how we, the things we value, we have a different relationship with things and people that we value. Amen? And when you value or honor something, then it affects your, your attention. It affects even how you feel about those things or those people. There is a sense with honor that you don't want to do anything to dishonor what you honor. And in fact, you do not. And uh, we see it now, again, I mentioned there's a worldly wisdom that's opposite. It is. The Bible talks about the world's wisdom is earthly, sensual, or devilish among other things. And, and almost, my message, I almost had a message work, well, I had a message working entitled War of Wisdom. That may come later, but this, was, this one came instead. Because what God showed me was in 1 Corinthians, the whole first chapter is talking about contrast with worldly wisdom and godly wisdom. Paul even says that, that even not many people who are worldly wise will serve God. He said, and God, God makes foolish the wisdom of this world. So the thing is, y'all, you know, boy, it's a lot here. You have to, we are, we're all, gra- we, we, listen, we're all raised in worldly wisdom. And a part of this whole devotional is shifting our understanding to the godly form of wisdom. For example, in the world, People consider it wise to, uh, when they're dating, I'll just be blunt with you, we're going to have sex first to see if we like each other that way before we get married. Now, that's the wisdom folk actually use. We're going to hook up, we're going to be together here to see if we can work this thing out before we say I do. They actually do that. And then... They also have a thing called prenuptials where we're going to get married, but we're going to sign a contract. If you trip on me, you don't get none of my money. Now, that ain't, ain't a bad idea, really, but, no, but it's worldly wisdom. <laughs> it's, it's worldly wisdom. Now, I won't say all worldly wisdom is bad. All right? I just say it's worldly wisdom. <laughs> But yes, it, 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 go, it gets deep, y'all. I mean, I mean we're, even now, we, we, we think that's something very special uh, and worthy of almost worship because somebody is athletically talented and becomes a phenomenal athlete. Now we're going to listen to them talk. I don't want you to talk. Play, boy. You ain't got nothing to say. Just run the football. You don't jump. Don't talk. Just play, right? But folk attach significance to people. They, they transfer, like he, he got some kind of wisdom. He got no wisdom. He's a great athlete. That don't come with special wisdom to advise you on your life. Amen. 
Same goes for movie stars, musicians, rap artists. I mean, whenever I'm watching television and they bring on some artist and ask me to talk, unless she's a believer in Christ, I'm turning the channel. I want to hear, you can sing for me, you can play for me, but don't start talking. <laughs> because I don't relate to you that way, see? Because see, in the wisdom of God, I know who my teachers are. I know whose voices I should listen to. There are many voices in the world, the Bible says. I'm not going to listen to everybody that got something that's talking, right? Especially if somebody seemed like they somebody. You know, the Apostle Paul said in Galatians, he says, those who seem to be something added nothing to me. Look it up. You, th you think about that for a minute. You, those who seem to be something added nothing to me. And they got your money. You got nothing for the most part. And then the people who are close to you who actually have poured their lives into you, who actually are, you can actually talk to them personally, those folk, you give them less honor than the ones that you see up high and far away. That's worldly wisdom. Amen, church? Amen. So we're going to honor God by valuing him. And so these devotionals, these, these, this time in prayer, reading scripture, reading the Bible commentary, you know, responding to the questions, if you do this every day, it's for one reason only. You honor God. That's all you're doing it for. I've asked you to do it. But I've asked you to do it and some are not doing it. So it ain't about me, that's for sure. It has to be about that you honor God enough. Well, but see, Lord, I, I got a busy schedule. Who gave you your schedule? Well, I got to go to work. Who gave you your job? I mean, are we going to really tell God I don't have time? You better rearrange other stuff. I see, it's safe value. value. Honor is about where you place the value. Amen, somebody. You know, Jesus valued time with God so much, check this out, it says it in the Bible more than once, that Jesus had occasion to send people away. He actually sent the multitudes away so that he could go be with God. Sent them away. And there were still folks sick, still folk who hadn't been fed. And he sent them away. Because, listen, you can be up with people all night. You can be up with people all night. Listen, you can actually lose your soul trying to help people all the time. You can lose your mind. Lose all your peace. I help so many people. Yeah, but you're crazy now. Look at you. <laughs> you help all these people, and you ain't got no sense no more. Because all that stuff is now on you. They just, they just loaded you up with all that stuff. Thank you. <laughs> hey, thank you. You got all this stuff. See, you have to learn that your ministry is to God. And that when you learn how to let God help people and do your part and get in and out, when God says you will last a long time and be more effective, you will be, listen, y'all, you won't burn out. You'll have your joy. You won't backslide. You won't. Because you must understand, God is the Savior. Jesus Christ is the Savior. In the, in the house of wisdom, you are not going to let people wear you down where you don't have time to pray. What kind of, what kind of minister, what kind of Christian are we when we, we can't find time to do a devotion? It only takes five minutes to do that. I mean, these things are short, five, ten minutes. You don't have time. See, so... This is just a way to help us recognize that, to live in overflow. We need to honor God and listen to him. Say, Lord, help me. Listen to you. Look at Proverbs 4. I'm almost done. Proverbs 4. And this listening part is so key. And there's lessons. You'll see lessons in devotional that deal with listening and hearing. But Proverbs chapter 4, verse 10 says, My child, 
listen to me, and do as I say, and you will have a long, good life. I will teach you wisdom's ways and lead you in straight paths. When you walk, you won't be held back. When you run, you won't stumble. Take hold of my instructions. Do not let them go. Guard them. Watch this. For they are the key to life. That's awesome. And that's straight from the heart of God. Listen to me. Do as I say. And you have a long, good life. Now, wisdom is not giving out pep talks. This ain't no pep talk. This is actually what you need to live by. I'll give you an example. This is a, kind of like a hard example. I remember in the 70s, 80s and stuff, you know, we, we began to wear seatbelts. We didn't wear seatbelts before the 70s. I mean, if you wore a seatbelt, people like, what's wrong with you? What you afraid of? What's your problem? It was actually wasn't cool to wear a seatbelt, I'm telling you. Not at all. And even people going through windshields didn't stop. It didn't help it. Hey, I'm, okay, I'm going to the windshield. I got to go to the windshield. I got to be cool. <laughs> so the government did us a favor. They passed a law telling us to wear seatbelts. We resisted that for a while. All right? And then we found out we can make, tell the people, you know, Said we're not cool. Well, I'm just doing the law, man. I don't want to do it. But you know what? They said I got to do it, so I'm doing it. They gave us a reason. But here is what wisdom says. Was always saying, buckle up. Buckle up. Put your seatbelt on. I'll give you an example. That's not a pep talk. Because that little habit will save your life. That habit, that little, that's wisdom. It is wise to put your seatbelt on. Amen. Am I telling the truth? Amen. And it says, listen, do what I say, and you will have a long, good life. Because you can survive an accident wearing a seatbelt. It ain't guaranteed, but you're more likely to. You know what I'm saying? So when you read, this, this is like, these are not words for you to just Say, oh, that's so nice. We'll go. I just, ooh, rah, rah. No, this is what you, this, this will save you. What God is saying is for your life. I mean, I'm talking about your whole life. Spirit, soul, body, mentally, emotionally, at every level. These are the words that save our lives and, and really help us to be a blessing to other people. I will teach you wisdom's ways and lead you in straight paths. All right? Sometimes people are wandering around. They stumble around. You know, you can see it in your mind's eye. Somebody just like staggering around, you know, lost, going from side to side. It takes you a long time to go from here to that back door if you weave through all the aisles in this auditorium before you get to the back door. Right? Just walk straight down the middle and you'll be there. And so wisdom comes and says, now, okay, uh, here, come here, walk this way, right through there. Save you all kind of time. But people don't listen. Therefore, you see them wandering over here, trying a little bit of this, a little bit of that, right? Picking up all kind of notions and ideas and getting confused along the way when they could have walked straight through and gotten there a long time ago. You know, we think about Israel. We think about the 40 years Israel's in the wilderness trying to get from the promised land to, from Egypt to the promised land. That was not a long way, y'all. Check the map. It's a few hundred miles, really. It took them 40 years. You know, it was a three-day journey. It took them 40 years. Because when you don't listen to God, you're, you're asking for trouble. You actually are asking, look, this devil just hit me, throw roadblocks, push me off in the pit, because when you, don't want to listen, when you don't listen to God, you're actually asking for the opposite. And because of his mercy being there, you don't experience all the stuff you would experience for not honoring him. And he says, take hold of my instructions. 
Do not let them go. Look at that. Do not let them go. He says, uh, guard them for they are your life. Now, I'll tell you, you know, boy, I wouldn't give up my Bible for anything. I mean, I mean, Bible, I mean, not just the book, I mean, but the word of God. You know what I'm saying? Amen. You couldn't get me. I mean, you could pass a law that says, if you read the Bible, you're going to jail, I'm going to go right out in the street and start reading. I'm going to walk right out in the middle of the street. I mean, not the street, I mean, on the sidewalk. I mean, tell me I can't read the Bible. I mean, don't say anything to me uh, that God told me. And tell me not to do what God said. Now, I'm going to go straight out there and read the Bible to see what y'all are going to do. I'm putting y'all on blast, okay? When they, when they, you know, denied zoning for our building, I thought to myself, well, I'll be here when y'all come. Just come get me. Take me to jail. And I'll ask the members, those who are willing, come on, we're going to go to jail together. And, you know, I, I didn't. I thought about it. I thought a lot of folk can't handle that. But I thought I was serious. If they said you cannot have a church here when the Constitution says we can and everything that's legal says we can, I'm just going to be here anyway. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, I say this, and, you know, I, I want to think that even the 60s civil rights movement, I'd have been one of those out there marching. That's me. How you going not, how can you let stuff just go? <laughs> you don't deal with it. So then, how can we not let wisdom guide us? Amen. Even if it means we have to suffer for it, so be it. Because, listen, somebody's going to give up. Either you or the devil. You or the circumstances against you. I mean, something, somebody has to back down. And in wisdom, we can stand because God is with us. Say, God is with me. He, so he says, guard them, guard, guard the instructions because they are the key to life. Say the key to life. Key to life. We know what keys represent, right? Authority, access. Nobody's going home today in their car without that key or that key fob, whatever you got. You know, you're not going, I mean, you're going to wander around this building looking. <laughs> until you find your key. You're not going to leave this parking lot in, the, in your car without your key, right? We, obviously. But why do, we, why do we take such a less serious view of God? How can I go through the day, even start the day, without the key of prayer, without the key of the word, without the key of God's word and wisdom? I, I, why do we contemplate going through life without the keys? Of life, which we don't have, which we don't have, unless God give them to us, hmm? unless we go get keys, unless we let grace and wisdom give us the keys. And when you get the keys, you're good to go. Last thought before we have some testimony. You know, I taught I taught uh, at Bible College for four years. I enjoyed that season's over now. I did it for four years. And I realized something. I knew it, but it became uh, more real to me that what students that we consider, quote unquote, smart are actually people who have a real good habit for listening. They're very good listeners, and they're very good at acting on what they're being told. And so they, they've listened so well until they understand the material, they pass all the tests, they answer all the quizzes correctly, and we say they are smart. Think about it. Really, we're just saying smart really comes down to listening. Amen, somebody? Amen. And, and, that, and that if we can just transfer that, that concept, that Blessing and prosperity and living in the overflow and serving God and, and walking in victory and all that, it just comes down to listening. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And, of course, and obeying and doing, right, listening and doing. 
And so I want you today, you know, here on day five and challenge us to honor God, to value him, to value the, the life he's given us, to value, to value the word of God, to value his son, Jesus, to value the Holy Spirit's working, to value our pastors and leaders and families and friends, value and honor, honor God and the people he's placed in your life appropriately. Amen, church? Amen. Let's all stand. Glory to God. 40 minutes.